Welcome to Tea with Our Ping. In every major metropolitan city around the world, there is likely a Chinatown where many ethnic Chinese live. They run restaurants, groceries, laundry shops, barber shops, Buddhist and Taoist temples, you name it. These are not just places for overseas Chinese. Tourists go there too. However, the Chinese people don't call it Chinatown. They actually call it Tang Ren Jie, or the Tang People's Street, meaning the street for the people from the Tang Dynasty. You might be curious, why? This is because the Tang Dynasty is widely perceived by the Chinese people as the greatest era in China's 5,000 years history, the Age of Enlightenment. So Chinese people, especially those who live outside China, prefer to be identified as Tang Ren, the people of the Tang, the greatest dynasty of all. Every dynasty has its own great emperor, yet Emperor Taizong of the Tang is widely regarded as the best of all dynasties. Who then is Emperor Taizong of the Tang? He was actually born with the name Li Shimin. In his 51-year lifetime, he had accomplished many amazing things. He started his career at an early age in the military and helped his father Li Yuan overthrow the unpopular Sui dynasty and establish the Tang dynasty. Li Shimin had two brothers. The elder was technically the crown prince and should have been the rightful heir. However, it was Li Shimin who aided his father and played a key role in the rebellion against the tyrannical Sui dynasty. Seeing the younger brother was the favored successor, the two jealous brothers conspired to poison him at a banquet. Li Shimin survived, and his advisors urged him to take action for the sake of the Tang dynasty. He hesitated but had no choice except to have his own two brothers killed, who had become his fiercest political rivals. In 626 AD, Li Shimin officially began his reign of Zhen Guan, also known as Zhen Guan Zhizhi in Chinese, or the Age of Enlightenment as Emperor Taizong. This reign of Zhen Guan actually paved the road for a prosperous Tang dynasty in the next 130 years. Emperor Taizong expanded Chinese territory tremendously and consolidated the central government power by doing away with regional warlords. When he first came to power, there were only about 2.9 million households in the empire. By 652 AD, the population rose to 3.8 million households. Meanwhile, there were only about 5,000 horses at the beginning of the Tang Dynasty, but the number of horses reached some 700,000 within a few years. The economy became strong, backed by reduced taxes. The military was powerful. Arts and culture reached the peak of Chinese civilization, according to many historians. The entire society was so harmonious that people felt safe to go out at night without locking the door. On the foreign affairs front, Emperor Taizong defeated the Turks in the West, formed a long-term alliance in 641 AD with the Tibetan ruler Song Zhang Ganpo through a marriage with Princess Wen Chen, an imperial court lady. Emperor Taizong later conquered Korea in the East, ensuring the security of the empire's borders. Historians also noted there were contacts with the foreign missionaries even as far as from the Byzantine Empire. The famous Silk Road started in the Han Dynasty, but it was during the Tang Dynasty that trade between China and the Western world reached new heights. Historical documents show that Emperor Taizong always preferred to treat ethnic minorities with diplomacy, soft power, and mutual trust, instead of harsh military measures. In terms of domestic policies, Emperor Taizong was perhaps the most open-minded emperor of all dynasties. He embraced the different voices and opinions. He also encouraged his people to speak their minds. He sent monk Xuanzang to India for Buddhist teachings, with all sorts of tribulation on the 17-year journey. This story was later turned into a famous Chinese novel, Journey to the West. Under his reign of Zhen Guan, there was tolerance of different spiritual faiths and religions. 
Emperor Taizong is also known to be a patron of arts and calligraphy. He collected many artworks and more than 3,000 calligraphy pieces from famous calligrapher Wang Xizhi, including the famous preface to the collection of poems composed at the Orchid Pavilion. Before he passed away, he even instructed his son to bury this calligraphy with him. Poetry, literature, paintings, and the famous Tang pottery were highly developed and treasured. Neighboring countries such as Korea, Japan, and Vietnam all sent students to learn the Tang culture. Zen Buddhism actually arrived in Japan during the Tang dynasty. In the Republic, Plato mentioned the philosopher king as the ideal state ruler. Emperor Taizong perhaps fits well into that category wise, able, ambitious, but open-minded. His imperial court was full of talented ministers who used to serve his enemies. They spoke their minds and even openly challenged him. Wei Zheng, a senior minister, was such a character. He alone challenged Emperor Taizong over 200 times in the imperial court. Once Wei Zheng argued heatedly with Emperor Taizong in front of many other court ministers. This enraged the Emperor Taizong, who later complained to the Queen that the Wei Zheng should deserve to die for humiliating the Emperor in public. Yet the Queen congratulated the Emperor for being open-minded and having such outspoken ministers in his imperial palace. Emperor Taizong then realized that he shouldn't have let anger get the best of him, and has since embraced all kinds of candid criticism. After Wei Zheng's death, Emperor Taizong said, Using bronze as a mirror allows one to keep his clothes neat. Using history as a mirror allows one to see the rise and fall of the empire. Using a person as a mirror allows one to tell right and wrong. When Wei Zheng died, I lost a mirror. This famous saying has often been cited by later generations. Emperor Taizong has been widely praised by historians for his wisdom and good governance. His reign of Zhengguan became regarded as an exemplary model against which all future emperors were measured. He's credited for putting the country and his people above himself, and valued all advice from his people. This type of leadership, sadly, is nowhere to be found these days in China, where traditional values such as introspection, selflessness, tolerance of different voices, Respect for the mandate of heaven, compassion, and open-mindedness have long been forgotten. Under the totalitarian communist rule, speaking up requires courage and can be life-threatening. The Soviet-style labor camps are housing tens of millions of Chinese prisoners of conscience. They range from human rights lawyers, public intellectuals, to religious adherents, such as the Falun Gong practitioners, Christians, and Tibetan Buddhists. Just a few days ago, an outspoken Hong Kong journalist, Sarah Liang of the Epoch Times, was hospitalized as she was attacked near her residence by a plainclothes security agent. The assault came less than one month after her newspaper printing facility was vandalized by these security agents, forcing the news outlet to halt printing for several days. Censorship in mainland China has now applied to Hong Kong, where the rule of one country, two systems is disappearing fast. Ancient Chinese wisdom says, there's more harm to stop the free flow of people's thought than to stop that of the rivers. Distrusting, censoring, and deceiving the people are typical features of an Orwellian society. Emperor Taizong often reminded his ministers and future rulers that the people are like water. Water may keep the boat afloat, but may also sink it. By going against the wishes of the people, water or the people will soon or later sink this boat of the communist regime. History shows that people do have the power to turn the tide. Marcus Aurelius, a wise Roman emperor, wrote in his meditations, what we do now echoes in eternity. Sadly, People in the Middle Kingdom enjoyed freedom of speech under Emperor Taizong some 1500 years ago, but not now. Let's stand on the right side of history to protect our values of freedom and humanity. With that, let's take a tea break. After all, 
Good ideas start with brainstorming, but great ideas start with tea. Until next time, peace and tea be with you.